Oh. Uh. Okay. Yeah. Let's get. No. I'm good. I'm good. Just to stay. So I want to be close to him. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Y'all go ahead and be seated. Be seated. Be seated in the house of the Lord. I tell you, I, I, I too am excited and, and I thank God for this opportunity. I enjoy being here and I thank God for Sister Baines and Sister Ramsey and Pastor Baines allowing us to be here, giving reverence to God, honor to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I thank God again for this opportunity. Let me say a quick word of prayer. Lord God, we love you. Magnify and exalt your holy and your righteous name. Lord, I thank you for how you've shown yourself strong, oh God. I ask, oh God, that you move by your spirit on today and continue, oh God, to keep us in the hollow of your hand. And we'll be gracious to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor truly is thine. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. One of the things I, I, I love to do is share with women. So I was so excited when they said, oh, we're going to have a workshop and we're going to be sharing, we're going to have classes. And my husband, uh, Dr. Robinson, he, he, he's a teacher by profession and a teacher by calling. And he, he preaches when, he, when the Spirit gives others, and he just loves to do all of that. And one of the things I told him, I said, oh, I'm going to get a chance to go speak on praise, worship, and prayer. He said, okay, good, baby, good, good. Just give the word, get the word. I said, okay, good, okay. Why you say it like that? He said, well, nah, you know you're going to teach. I said, huh? I said, oh, I'm going to share. I'm going to be excited. I'm going to be on fire. I said, the women are going to pump us up. We're going to have a good time. And he said, okay. He said, okay. <laughs> then he came back. He said, you got your hand out? I said, uh, no. He said, okay. Then I laid down. I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to stop being disobedient. <laughs> I'm going to get my hand out. Because <laughs> one of the things my husband was pressing to me that the spirit was saying, and I just wasn't listening because I was just she always said, we're emotional creatures. We love the praise. We love the hype. We love the emotion. We're, God made us emotional creatures. I said, we're just going to praise the Lord. I'm going to be comfortable. And we're going to dance and shout all over the place, get slain in the spirit. I said, oh, God, I thank you. I need one of them kind of services. He said, baby, it's a workshop. I said, okay, Lord. He said, okay, so take that hat off. He said, it's a good one, my dog. It's a good one. But take that hat off, baby, because it's time to teach. We've got to sit down so when the storms come and we can't jump and shout and we're going through, we got something to look at and say, okay, God, this is what your word says to remind us of what it means to pray, praise, and worship. Amen. Everybody got a handout. Everybody got a pen. Everybody got a Bible. Because it's a workshop, everybody up in here going to work today. Everybody get a Bible, because I'm going to call on somebody, everybody to read something. Okay? And if, I, if you know it by heart, jump up and say it, because then you won't have to read it. <laughs> All right? Jump up if you know what's supposed to go in the blank, because we're going to work today. We're going to write it down so that we can have it for future reference, to draw on, so God can bring back to our remembrance. I'm a writer. I have to write everything down. I plan. I don't go nowhere without my calendar. Somebody asked me something, baby, wait, let me get my calendar. Because <laughs> if I don't write it down, nine times I tell for Paula, it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. But let me share with you one of the things I, I thank God uh, for my mother who's here with me on today. In your life, amen, 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 amen. I've heard them say, I thank God for a praying mother. Well, I've experienced it in my older years. I knew I had it growing up. And yeah, I was born and raised in the church. She drugged me to church. And they said, tell me, had a drug problem. Yeah, I got drugged to church. Every time church door was open, I was there. When it closed, I was the one clocking the door. But here's what I'm going to tell you. I didn't appreciate it then. I didn't realize what it was doing for my life then. And then the Lord pressed on my dad's heart to bring my mother to Texas. I said, oh, Lord, he must be sick or dying or something happened. Because I already told him, when something happened to you, in two weeks, after we bury you, I'm coming to get my mama. <laughs> two weeks. Now, you know, if something happened to mama, I might come and get you in 30 days. But it, it, two weeks. 
I, he said, well, you know what? And the Lord pressed me to bring my mother to Texas. So my mother's been here now in Texas with me for two years. Amen. Amen. And, and we have prayer in my house. Amen. She come and sanctify my house right. on a weekly basis. Right. We pray together. Yes. So I know as I've matured now yes. what it means to have a praying mother. Yes. And it makes a difference in your life. Amen. It's awesome to have a praying mother. So I thank God for my mother. And I know what God is doing in my life as he brings me through this workshop that we're talking about, prayer, praise, and worship. We've had to go through some storms together. I thank God for my granddaughter, my oldest one, who's with me, who I know the Lord has a calling on her life. Because the devil tried to take out when she was real small. But God, because I had a praying mother that would go with me, not just hold my hand and pray, but go with me and pray. It makes a difference. So one of the things I'm going to encourage you to do is in this workshop where you find yourself lacking or slack, build it up this year. You already told us 2015 is going to be off the chain. It's going to be something to behold. We're going to say wow at what God is doing. And I'm looking for my wow because 13 and 14 I had some woes. I'm like, whoa, Lord, where you at? Whoa, Lord, wh why you let this happen? What, what's really going on? Watch service. They say somebody, y'all testify. I couldn't even get the words. I couldn't even say how good God was. I was in so much turmoil. But God, I said, Lord, this year I'm better. I'm stronger. And it's because of your will and your way in my life that I'm able to make it through. So one of the things I'm going to share with you, I'm going to just put this right here. Because y'all got y'all's Bibles, right? Y'all going to be reading when I tell y'all to read. So, so y'all jump up. When I get, find the scripture, the scripture is in your handout. Find that scripture and be ready to read. When I say, let's read. One of the things they've all, and again, I'm just going to really summarize what everybody has said. These teachers were awesome. They encouraged us in the Lord and gave us the word all up in my notes so I know I'm on track. I've been coming with some good folk. <laughs> I said, Lord, I know I'm in the right place at the right time because these folks know I already read all through my notes and I'm just going to summarize. So y'all fill in the blanks and you'll have it to go as you journey on your life. In the book of Psalms, there's a very short one that summarizes the whole thing. Whole thing for me, prayer, praise, and worship, it summarizes. Psalms 117, somebody read it. It ain't but two verses. Amen. Psalms 117 talks about God's unfailing love. Why are you in a relationship with your husband? It ain't just because of his money. <laughs> Hold on. It ain't just because of his job. Because, baby, the money's going to fail. It's going to run out. <laughs> okay? Hope it ain't because his body is going to get old. <laughs> okay? His unfailing love towards us. That's why we praise him. That's why we worship him. That's why we praise him, because he has unfailing love for us. In that, he has the unfailing love. He's faithful. How many of y'all going to be with an unfaithful man? I don't think so. You ain't going to be in a relationship. That's not what you want. God is faithful to us, no matter how and what we do. So your first blank is unfailing love. Your second is his faithfulness. And that then makes him worthy. I like our things. Yeah. I like our things. Because a lot of times we don't really realize what it means to be worthy. Yeah. Yeah. What causes worthiness. Yeah. And why we should respond to it. <laughs> you think it's worthy and sometimes because uh, it's good. Right. I want it. Mm -hmm. It satisfies me. Yeah. But it's not because of you yeah. that makes it worthy. Uh -huh. Because of he yeah. is worthy. Okay? Praise is not about steps and strides. Hey, I got my dance. Yeah, right. It's about a lifestyle. Yeah. It's a lifestyle, ladies. It's a lifestyle. One of the things you have to realize as a Christian, it is a way of life. Yeah. Don't let them label you as a holy roller and you ain't holy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All you doing is rolling. 
Make it a lifestyle. Prayer, praise, and worship is when we walk in our purpose, we're doing the will of God. When you talk about worship, think about purpose. Think about it. And one of the things I'm going to encourage you to do is when you think about the trials and tribulations that you go through, ladies, that's a great opportunity for praise. If you never went through anything, how would you know that he's a healer, that he's a provider, that he's a comforter? How would you know those things other than what somebody tells you? But when you go through those things, that's why the Bible says count it as joy. Because it gives you an opportunity to have great praise. And God to use his power in your life. Not only his power, it is part of his plan for your life. He did not say it would always be easy. He did not promise that. But he promised he'd be with us. So in that, no, you, you're definitely on the right track. Praise is expressing to God your appreciation. That's your next box. Un- understanding of his work. You've got to realize that, as our thing says, he's worthy. And when you praise him, you show him that you appreciate and understand that he is. If you're saying, Lord, I thank you. I not thank you for the car, the diamonds, the ring, but I thank you for your divine nature. His divine nature that dwells within us. His divine nature that moves in us. Praise is an outward expression, that's your next blank, of our attitude towards him. Now, how many of y'all are supposed to say, ooh, she got a bad attitude? How is your attitude towards God? How is it? The book of Psalms has three different books and three different things. Three of those five things to do with prayer, praise, and worship. Psalms 145 talks about praise. Psalms 104 talks about worship. Psalm is the main book of application because it gives us our thoughts, how we address our hurts, our feelings, our emotions. It deals with all that, our longings, our prayers. It teaches us who God is in the book of Psalms. And that's why it makes him worthy of our praise. Praise in the Old Testament has three words that are highlighted. Hale, y'all know what that is, making connection with noise. Ha! Yada, with the dance. And Zomar, with the music. New Testament deals with Eucharistine and Egalene, Egalist. Egalogen, which is to bless and or to give thanks in the New Testament. Now, here's what you got to realize. When we praise God, usually it's out of attitude of happiness or joy. Okay? But, oh, I'm sorry, joy was your next block. My attitude of joy in the life of the Christian. But now, here's what I'm going to share with you. Is it the basic mood of joy in the life of the Christian? Are you always joyful? Okay, ponder that. Everything that God created now is to express its joy in praise. Everything. The Bible says, let everything that what? Praise ye the Lord. All right. We were created to rejoice. We were created to praise him. And we praise him in the fulfillment of our purpose as we accept God's gifts. Now, when we say gifts, we always think, oh, yeah, I want to. Those are the gifts we're talking about. The main gifts of a believer should be redemption and creation. Redemption and creation. Because he made, that's not a blank, I'm just giving y'all this is some extra. Okay? <laughs> it's the heathen that won't worship God. Because he's not in right relationship. That's your next block. He's not in right relationship or close fellowship with the one being praised, and that should be God. Now, you know, you can praise your car, you can praise your dog, you can praise a whole bunch of other stuff, but that's not right relationship with God, okay? So, again, you want to be in right relationship with God. You want to be praising him. You want praise to be an expression, but it should not be something that does not complete your joy. You want it to be complete in him. Nothing can take the place of that. 
You want to be completing him. You want to be that satisfying end of a service, of a day, of a worship with him. Nothing should be able to fill that spot, fill that void in your life. My husband loves me to death, but he ain't Jesus. Okay? We teach marriage. We tell the husband to be able to die for him, but if you do, baby, I know you ain't getting that up. <laughs> so, I understand. <laughs> I get it. I get it. But Jesus is the one who got up for me. So, therefore, I can be intimate with him. It, that's your next block. When God commands us to praise and glorify him, he's inviting us to enjoy him intimately. Okay? You should want to get that close to God. That close to him. The problem comes now when men say, okay, God, you did that, so I'm going to do it. It's my duty. You do it as a duty. That's your next block. And that is based on your mood, your feelings, and your circumstance. If I ain't feeling good, if I don't feel like going, if I'm tired, if I'm hungry, I ain't finna praise nothing and nobody but Burger King on my way home. <laughs> Hallelujah, give me that Burger King, that, give me a walk. No, 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 no. That's not what it's about. And that's sometimes what we do. And we, I, I love praise teams, you know. I, I love to hear them sing, and I love to sing, but I do what the Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, because I can't carry a tune in a bucket with two hammers. And the Lord knows if he'd have gave me a voice, I'd use it for my own gain. Not here. So he didn't give me that. He, he didn't give me that. He didn't give me that. But that's all right. But what I have, I give unto him. Amen? All right. Next thing I want you to realize is, because again, we're talking about that love and those promises. In that, that song that that young man wrote, Praise is what I do. If you listen to that song, we're talking about praise in the good and the bad. I'm going to praise when I'm happy and when I'm sad. Because praise is what I do. I'm going to do that no matter what. And if you praise your way through, God will help you. He will strengthen you. You will then turn and say, okay, Lord, like uh, Philippians 4 and 4, what's it say? Rejoice is your next blank. Always. Somebody repeats that and says always. No, no, no. It's always. And that means at all times and every time. Okay. Okay. It don't mean everything I'm doing. No, no. It's at all times and everything. Because sometimes you got to go to work and you can't be talking about, thank you, Jesus, thank you. You better do your work when you get fired. <laughs> be up there laying hands on folks and you're supposed to be cutting meat. <laughs> okay? You better cut that meat. And thank you, Jesus, while you cutting it. All right? At all times in everything. All right? Now, when Paul wrote this, he was in prison, y'all. So why would he say rejoice? Because, again, it's about all times in everything. But he was in prison. I just want to remind you that. But there's a lesson in our attitude of praise. The inner being should not be a reflection. Reflection of our outward circumstance. When you're looking good on the outside, you probably feeling good on the inside. So that thing should be vice versa. Don't dress it up on the outside. every now and then, because they talk about me real bad. I said, baby, I look good to me and Jesus. <laughs> Fix it up on the inside and let then Jesus reflect on the outside. Amen? Because greater, somebody started, then you stop. 
Come on, that's an interactive lesson here. Greater is he than in the world. That's your next block. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. One of our teachers already told us that. But now is he really in you? How do you know? Does the spirit of Christ dwell in you and take up residence in your life? Is he really? Well, now the book of Psalms is a praise book. It's a collection of expressions of individuals and collective. And one of the things <clears throat> that God said we should do is render praise together. Somebody go to Psalms 34 and 3. I thought somebody was going to jump up and say it. Oh! <laughs> I knew if I gave y'all sport up, y'all would come on. What's it say? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Y'all didn't say that right. <laughs> no. Oh! <laughs> now you know when it's good to you. And you say, oh! Magnify the Lord with me. All right. Exalt his name together. That's crucial, saint. Crucial. You've got to say it like you mean it. You can't just read a uh, What? Who you mean? I'm not, you ain't magnified nothing. Nothing. Put that little oh. 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 Don't ever let him read that scripture and you don't give God a hallelujah oh. That's a hallelujah oh. That's what my husband got. Amen. All right. In that, we're going to continue to move on. Our next uh, blank is God. Praise gives honor and pleasure to God and bears testimony to God's people. We always say we overcome by the word of our testimony. If you got a weak praise, you got a weak testimony. It's weak. They're like, well, why am I going to praise God? You ain't praising him. He, he ain't that, you ain't that happy about it. You don't seem that excited. And I can't see much he done done in your life. But if your story lines up with your test, you too can praise him through it because he brought you through. Don't let the circumstance be the highlight of your story. Never. Allow God to manifest and be it for you. Amen. Give him pleasure. Give him the glory. Praises in worship always gives God all the glory. All the glory. It's crucial. In Psalms 35 and 18, it says, I will give thee thanks in the great congregation. I will praise you among the people. So again, they're seeing that they're knowing that. If you're giving him all the glory, praise should be a sacrificial is that blank? Self-offering that's real in the midst of suffering. I heard somebody talk about humility, humbling ourselves. You have to do that in order to present a sacrificial offering of yourself to God. He don't want you puffed up. He don't want you thinking you all that in the bag of chips. Lord, it's you. It's you. The sacrifice of praise is a sincere offering of praise. I mean it from my heart. If ain't but one person here, I mean this from my heart, Lord. If it's just me and you, I mean this from my heart. Suffering and praise should be linked together for the cause of Christ. Philippians 2, 17 through 18. Somebody get that. Amen. Amen. One of the things I, I encourage you to do when, when the youth are praising, 
because I'm talking, let me talk to my senior saints for, and I don't want to say see my seasoned <laughs> saints, seasoned <laughs> saints for a moment. It's our job to guide them in their prayer. Yeah. That's our job. In Mark, it tells us that you have to put new wine and new skins. Their experiences are not our experiences. That's right. Yeah, we might have tapped on hardwood floors and had cool uh, <laughs> rub boards. They ain't got that. They got iPads. Yeah. <laughs> they got lights. <laughs> they got technology. Yeah. And if they're using it, and they are, they have to use it in the class that they're being given. Yeah. Then let them use it in prayer. Yeah. Stop hindering <laughs> what God can do to his glory. What you do is you guide them in using it and giving God glory. Because I promise you, they give God all the glory, he'll render them the blessing. You already know what the Bible says about a blessing. He'll tell you I want blessing that you don't have anything to receive. So if you're not getting a blessing that you're able to ask about your prayer, ask if God will give you all the glory in your life. When the kids go forth and praise dance, that's the one that we all struggle with sometimes, and the mining and other things that they do, what is it that we are not guiding them in? Why is the spirit not using it? Yeah. Have we taught them what it means to give God all the glory? Yeah. Or will we let them get caught up in, oh, I got that move, and I can do it this way, and I can keep my leg this way. And, and what are we doing? How are we teaching? How are we guiding Oh, we let them go to their own devices. And then talk about it when they do it. Okay? So be mindful. We, and I'm, I'm put that, I'm going to take that hat off. Okay. I, I had to share that because one of the things that I, I love to do is get with young women and, and, and share with them and ask them, what is it that God has given you? If this child tells me God's given her a dance, I tell her she can't use it to glorify him. It's up to me then to guide her and how she uses it to his glory. Okay? Um, and then you want scriptures for that? Go to Acts 2, 4, 6, 3, and 8, 11, 18, 16, 25, and Ephesians 1, 1 through 14. Praise and worship always gives God glory. All the glory. And when we praise God with him, we give him all. With A, he'll give us one. A blessing that we won't have room enough again to receive it. One of the things you want to do when you're committing yourself as a sacrificial self offering to God and you're going through in the midst of your suffering, you want to make sure that, that sacrifice is pure, is holy. The praise, <coughs> the sacrifice of praise, again, is a sincere offering. I already gave y'all that block, didn't I? Amen. Be confident in God. That's that next block, Psalms 108 and 1. You want to be confident in that. Don't praise God like you ain't sure. Okay. Well, he might <laughs> come through. He might be a deliverer. He might be a healer. One of my favorite scriptures is Daniel. Say he do boy. And they say, King, we're going to tell you something. We're going to be mindful. We're going to be careful. The alpha you, uh, after you and now. We, we know that our God deliver us from this fire furnace. We, all, we know that. He's able. We know he will do it. He can do that. But if he don't, if he don't, because he might not, that might not be something you want to plan for. While we praise him, having prayer and in worship, might not be his plan. But he's able. But he will deliver us out of your hands. Okay? <laughs> this shall not have the victory over me. And that's how we have to have confidence, no matter how he does it, no matter how he chooses to work it out, he's able. And he will deliver us out of the hand of Satan. He will. Be it by death. He said live. Go back over here, girl. Go back over here by your book. 
know that in how you praise and worship God, these are things that we have to continue to walk in. Um, don't let your, your suffering and praise, if it's not for the cause of Christ, but because of the chaos of your life, be a deterrent. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're suffering because of chaos in your life or the cause of Christ. Praise the Lord. Okay? Don't let it deter you and stop you. That's the devil wants you to think, oh, you messed up. You tore up on the floor. You should have done that. You knew that it was sin when you did it. Well, baby, repent and praise him anyway. That's why they said David was such a great man. David messed up some stuff. Tore it up from the floor. But he quickly repented and was able to praise. Out of his clothes, that man would praise the Lord. Okay? So don't allow the chaos of your life to stop you from praising God. See, I'm, I can get back to my blank. Uh, if we are confident in him, we are triumphant in him. You have the victory. Don't make your circumstances out to be where I'm defeated. Woe is me. Stop praying those pity pat prayers. Lord, I lost it. Lord, it's gone. But Lord, you're more than enough. If I got you, you're more than the world against me. Yeah, he left. Yeah, she left. Yeah, they, I lost that. Yeah, that's gone. Well, it's okay. Naked I came, and naked I'm going to go. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Allow him to be a blessing in your life, whether you have stuff or not, because it's all temporary. Amen. Back to the lesson. My soul, oh, no, I skipped one there. Don't let how you feel, we talked about that, feel is that blank, or what you desire or do stop you from praising God. Be determined, again, to quote Psalms 34, 1 and 2. I will bless, bless the Lord all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Those are those blanks. Let's talk about continuum for a minute. Real quick, and I'm gonna move. I'm moving quickly. When you talk about continuum, does it mean you shout Jesus, Jesus, Jesus every day, all the way as you're going down the street? No, 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 no. It continuously means it's my thought. It's my thought, my mind that I'm going to do continually. I'm not gonna let it be idle. I'm not going to focus on things that are negative yeah. and bad. Mm -hmm. when, it's, when it's wrong and tore up, I'm a, mm, praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for you. How you about to manifest my way out? Because yeah, yeah. they said with every temptation, you provide a way of escape. I'm looking. I'm looking for it, Lord. Let him guide you in it. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The teacher already said that. Your soul includes your mind, your will, and your emotions. If I say my soul is going to magnify the Lord, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to line up. Yeah. My will and yeah, yeah. I got to get my emotions under control. Some things I just can't say. Some things I just can't say. Yes, my husband, is, he's a preacher, he's a pastor. We teach marriage couples. Yeah. Some things I just can't say about my husband. Kids is crazy. Quit magnifying that stuff. Magnify God. 
Make him bigger than all those things that are in your life. But how do we do that? Through prayer. That last block is prayer, which must include praise. Must include praise. Prayer is communication with God. That's one thing in, in, in our marriage seminars that we say is probably number one, number two cause of problems in marriage is communication. So if communication is an issue and he has given us prayer as our tool to communicate with him, why don't we use it? Why don't we use it? We are in a relationship with God. They've already said it. So if prayer then is the way we communicate with him, we've got to get better at it, which is why we're having this workshop. Prayer is only effective when it is continuous, consistent, dust those two blocks, and goes both ways. Stop lecturing God. You just talking, 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 a mile a minute. Ain't heard nothing he said. He's trying to talk to you in a still small voice through his word, through a word of prophecy. The Lord can be speaking to you and you ain't heard nothing because you jibber, 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 jibber. Lord, they done got on my nerves. Jesus, I need you to come do something. Come by here, dear Lord. No, hush. Let him speak to you. It's a communication in prayer. Let him speak to your heart. Philippians 4 and 6 says, be careful for nothing, but in everything, that's that next blank, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. That's crucial. You're thanking him for and in advance. Let your request be made known unto God. If you thank him in advance, when it come, you ain't shocked. You knew he was going to do it. Thank him in advance. Jesus Christ taught his disciples how to pray. With his doctrine and practice of prayer, Christ gives us the aims of prayer. That's your next block. The objectives of prayer and the methods of prayer. I call them the MOAs. The method, the objective, and the aims. In that, no. In the Bible, it gives you all kind of instruction. There are different parables that include how we are to persistent, be persistent, and continuous in prayer. Prayer does not change things. That's your next block. It changes you. Now, somebody don't believe it. Let me tell you why prayer changes you and not things. I'm not saying the thing won't change but you feel different about the thing if it changes or not. If you're in communication with God. A lot of times we look at the way things are going in our lives, the troubles, the trials, the temptations, things that we go through, and we say, okay, God, if you don't come through, I'm through. Yeah, you're right. You, you, you probably are. But the question is, are you through with him or are you through with it? If you're through with it, Prayer will change you. If you do with him, the thing is going to change you. So allow yourself to be changed in prayer. Let God change and minister to you in prayer. Different uh, Prayer does not change. Okay, things, that's your yes, things, and that's you. Prayer will bring about self-humiliation. We talked about that, which means acceptance with God. If I decrease, he must increase in me. I ain't decreasing because I ain't nothing in nobody. I'm decreasing because he's increasing. And I'm boasting in him. Because I got it going on now, don't get it twisted. Got it going slap on in Jesus. Okay? You ain't decreasing and you nothing ain't nobody. You somebody in him. So again, you are decreasing self-humiliation, which means acceptance with God. In a group, prayer requires unity. Evangelist already talked about it. We have to pray with expectation. Yes. Pray expecting God to do it. I said, well, Lord, I ain't too sure if you want me to have this. And I ain't too sure if you're going to do this. And I ain't too sure if that's the way you want me to do it. But Lord, your word says that I'm the head and not the tail. 
that I'm above and not beneath. Lord, I thank you because I'm coming up. I might be down to the floor, barely on the ground, but I'm coming up because you said I'm the head, not to tell I'm above and not beneath. So, Lord, I believe your word. I receive. I'm expecting you to do what your word says. This is the area in which your faith surrenders to God's will. Your faith surrenders to God's will. And again, much can be achieved. She already told me we can get much fruit. One of the things I encourage you to do, ladies, when you get home, read through some of these scriptures. I haven't been going to read them all today because I'm pressed for time. But one of the things I want you to look at is the Lord taught us how to pray in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. We're not going to read them. But they call it, uh, that's when the disciples actually teach us how to pray. And there were a lot of things that went on in the Old Testament. And they had different, th different periods of prayer where the patriarchs, they prayed and they were praying, calling on God's name. They were praying for deliverance. They were praying the post-exile. They were praying for a lot of different things that were going on, major themes in the Bible. So when they got free and they were in, and here we are now, Lord, what, how do we pray? What do we pray? So the Lord said, okay, here we go. When you pray, it must be offered to God in the name of Jesus name of Jesus, that's that block. It must be sincere. It covers sin and ignorance. During prayer, he offered thanksgiving. He sought guidance. So now if you're praying, you're communicating with God, you're seeking guidance, you got to hush and hear. Don't ask for guidance and then don't hear what he got to tell you. Well, Lord, where was you? I was right there talking to you. You weren't listening. He interceded. Intercessory prayer is awesome. Take the time to pray for others. Take the time to reach out to others, for others, on behalf of others. He communed with God. Because it's communication, so take that time where he has your undivided attention. Don't say a prayer always in the car, on the treadmill, <laughs> cooking food. Because <laughs> you know you ain't going to let that cake burn. You know you got to watch how many calories you're going to burn. You're not focused. You're not communing with him. Give him his time. How many of y'all want a man or a woman that ain't going to spend time with you? you? You ain't got time for that. You ain't got time for me. I ain't got time for you. But you want to call on him when you need him, when you want him. Take time. Spend time to commune with him. He petitions God's name. That's the next block. The kingdom and his will. He ain't asked for no car. He ain't asked for no house. He ain't sick God on nobody. When he petitioned, <laughs> get him, Jesus. You know, we're going to do it. Lord, you better get him. Because if you don't, Lord, I might have to. I know I done prayed that one. Okay, y'all, I done prayed it. Lord, you better get him. Because, <laughs> uh, I'm going to take him out. <laughs> that wasn't the petition that Jesus made. He, he petitioned his name, his kingdom, and his will. Now, as far as man is concerned, he petitioned the needs, forgiveness, and victory. Those should be our petitions in prayer in the line and way and will of God. Then you have your doxology. That's your closing declaration. You better close with something, baby. What God has declared. Not what you want. Not what you think. <laughs> but what God has declared concerning you. Always have a doxology. Don't leave church for the benediction. It's important. That's the closing. The declaration of what has gone on all day. I'm glad you stayed, baby. <laughs> Stay for the benediction. How? And I, I, I like movies. My husband and I, we were watching, even watching uh, Bad Boys. And he was driving. He said, now, that's how you drive. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's how you pray. That's how you pray. B.F. Westcott said, true prayer, the prayer that is answered. How many of y'all want y'all prayers answered? Amen. <laughs> Amen is the personal recognition and acceptance of the divine will of God. That's the prayer that God answered. Because it's in his will, and you've accepted it, and it shall come to pass. 
Amen. Command your soul to magnify, bless, and praise the Lord in prayer. In doing so, your prayer is a catalyst for worship. My last topic, and we're going home. Prayer is worship that includes all the attitudes of the human spirit as we approach God. That's with everything I got. I don't hold nothing back when I go to church. The kids, they say, Sister Robinson, we know when you in the church. I said, why you say that, baby? So we know you were at church Sunday. So how you know? Why you say that? We didn't hear you. <laughs> they said, we didn't hear you. Baby, you right. <laughs> I wasn't at church. <laughs> they said, hey, we ain't got to turn around. We know when Sister Robinson walk in church. Because she come with a praise on her lips. She sit right in front of me. She can tell y'all. <laughs> I come with a praise on my lips. And again, I can't sing. But I sure be making a joyful noise in my corner on the third row. Make a joyful noise. The Christian worships God when he adores, that's your first blank, confesses, praises, and communes with him in prayer. It's crucial, ladies. Crucial for us to do that. Everything that God has given us He's given us for a reason, a purpose. And some people even say for a season. But, but, but let, me, let, me, let me stop you right there because one of the things you've got to realize is every season that God allows in your life is to take you to another level. It's never to degrade you, debate you, bring you down, tee you up, push you out. You can use that to go to the next level. Some of the things I would say, the Lord, that church is going to do this. I don't see it. take your praise higher. You got a big mouth. I want to take your praise higher. So I'm going to let you go through this. That thing you thought would never come your way. So in that, use those things to adore God, confess it to him, praise him for it, and in the midst of it, and then commune with him. Amen? All righty. True worshiper is one who has been touched by the Spirit of God. In his relationship with God, he expresses his love and gratitude to him in real acts of spiritual worship. What does that mean? For the church, it is the essential concept for us to understand true worship is service. Yes. that there was the first African-American black woman that was over the price of women in Catholic money. Back in the day, it was like 35,000 a month. <laughs> Back in the day, 20, 30 years, that was a lot of money. And there was a black woman over, and he wanted to come meet her. Didn't know I was in his service. So when I, he came and sat in the boardroom, and I'm sitting there at the table, he like, oh, it's you. <laughs> One of the things the Lord pressed on me at that point, he said, look, you're here for my purpose. Yeah, yeah. You're here to give me praise. You need to worship me not man, yeah. not what I've done for you, yeah. but what you're going to do for me. Yeah. And at that point, I had to tell him, look, sir, um, I was on the answer to the sister this morning, and I just found out after I got it, I was the first African American in that cabin. Mm -hmm. Literally for about five, nine minutes in there. Mm -hmm. I couldn't talk. Mm -hmm. I didn't believe it. Have 
have some songs. We're going to sing. We might even dance up in here. But I, I can't help it. <laughs> it's in me. It's got to come out. So I encourage you to make sure your relationship with God is number one. I say all that to say, no matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, no matter what your circumstances, no matter where you find yourself, make sure it's still God number one. Amen. True worship requires relationship. I'm not going to have you read that scripture. Um, read it when you get home. It's not about a particular space or place. And if you read that, and it's talking about the woman at the well. And you all know the story and what she was saying to Jesus and about, you know, at the mountain of Jerusalem. It's not about a place or space. It's about the condition of your heart. It's about the condition of your heart. Worship the Father, which equals, again, relationship as a son. As sons. My son can come get anything I got. Anything. It don't matter. Because we're in relationship. And we walk in relationship. When you walk in relationship with God, you have true worship. And you should worship as a son. If there is a true worshiper, there must also be a false worshiper. Check yourself. Well, you wreck yourself. Check it. If there's a true one, there's got to be a false one. Worship here is defined as one who adores again, reverences, uh, awesome, awe, fear, who is in awe of God. In spirit encompasses the whole soul. We already talked about mind, will, and your emotions. That blanket soul. The Father seeketh such to what? Worship him. He don't want that part-time stuff. Faking and phony. He ain't accepting that foolishness. You doing it, but he ain't getting it. It ain't benefiting you. God is a spirit. It's that next blank. He is not a physical being limited to one place. Worship is always a response. I love our theme. To one of God's attributes, which is worthy. He truly is worthy. Moving to our next true worship requires reverence. Read the scriptures when you get home. It talks about the wise men. Now, we always talk about the wise men at Christmas. But we never talk about their attitude of prayer, praise, and worship as it relates to who Jesus was. The, wor the wise men worshiped Jesus for who he was, even though he was a baby in a manger with stinking animals, and who he still is. They knew it. They didn't see it with their eyes, because again, he was in a stinking manger with stinking animals, and a baby couldn't even feed his own self. So how he going to be the savior? <laughs> how you going to worship him as that? But they knew that. And that's what a true worshiper does. It don't, it don't, be, it don't matter what it look like. It don't matter what it's encompassed. It don't matter if you ain't hearing God yet. No matter if he ain't came when you wanted him. They say he's always on time. He, on, he ain't on time. He on his time. It ain't our time. It ain't on time. It's his time. All right. The next one. Worshippers reverence and or fear and honor God who for who he is. He's willing to give of himself that which is of value. Stop giving God your junk. And that's when they get on me. Sister Paula, you can do better than combing your hair. <laughs> I hate hair, y'all. Hate hair. If my hair could be that long, I'd be happy. But it's Give him glory with it. All right? Give it. It's a value. Give it to him because he, again, is worthy of your best. True worship requires a response. Again, love our theme. I said, oh, I like this theme. I can work with that. You all in there. Read Jeremiah when you get home. It gives a specific message to the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah was the tribe of what? What did Judah represent? Praise. Praise. All right, and in that, he told them, 
we are to enter the temple to worship, that's your blank, the Lord, and amend or change your ways, your will, and doings, your actions, and your behavior. So those blanks are amend your ways and doings. And I threw in change your will and your actions and behavior. It's required when you come in to worship because it ain't about you. It ain't about if your feet are hurting. It ain't about if you're tired. It ain't about if you're hungry. It ain't about if the air ain't on. You come in to worship. So get it changed. Get it quick. Fix it quick. Fix it quick. Our last worship requires reassurance. And one of the reasons I, 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 I use that last is because a lot of times your people talk about um, how David encouraged himself. And encouragement is life-giving in a lot of different cases. You could be going through, and somebody can just come and hug you. I'm so glad you're here. I love you. I was thinking about you. And I, just, I can't tell you how many people say they're encouraged when they hear me in church. They ain't got to see me. They ain't got to see me. But they hear me. They hear the praise. So I just know it ain't about me. It ain't about me. It's about the praise. It's about how I worship. It's about how I give God glory in my life. Now some folks get talking, oh yeah, I'm all that. Let me put the pump rope. But do it in my feet. true worshiper boo don't you go tell them just pray for them <laughs> to help them come into true worship because again it's not about you and I said Lord I thank you that when even when I'm tired I'm mad I said I'm just fussed out the good pastor in the car you didn't hear that uh, I can still come in <laughs> and praise God I can still come in and praise God as a true worshiper so with that, read uh, Psalms 4 and 7 when you get home. It says, Lord, you have given me great joy. Great joy. Again, I could be mad as a bowl of hot pepper. But because of God's great joy, I can still come in and worship him. God's great joy. Now, joy versus happiness. I'm going to deal with this and I'm going to move on quickly. Because a lot of us Tear up stuff because we ain't happy. The Bible hadn't said you're going to be happy. The Lord did not promise you happiness. He said joy. What's the difference? Joy comes from knowing and trusting God. That's your blank. If you have no joy, ask yourself, do I know and trust God for who he is? Not just in my life. That's when we get it twisted. It ain't about who he is in your life because you might have it wrong. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's a whole bunch of folks yeah. that got it wrong. Yeah. See it in the book? Come back to the Bible. Study, 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 pray. the word that can teach you and the Holy Spirit will convict you not condemn you big difference if they beating you over the head with the Bible and knocking you out <laughs> and condemning you baby you in the wrong place the spirit does not do that it convicts okay so in that Joy comes from knowing and trusting God. 
Happiness is a result of happenings. What's happening? What's happening in your life? What ain't happening in your life? Happening or circumstance? What's going on? What's around you? Who are you around? Who are you letting in your life? Who you open the door for at 2 o'clock in the morning? Who you, uh, okay, this, hey. <laughs> I'm going to just keep it real for you. I'm going to keep it real for you. What, 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 what you doing? What's the circumstances in your life? You're hooking and crooking? Okay. What you doing? What's your circumstance? Okay. That's what happiness comes from. But you should be steady if you have joy. That's a typo. Put a Y after that steady. Steady. If you have joy, you're going to be steady. When you're dealing with happiness, it's unpredictable because it's about happenings and circumstance that you can't what? Always control. So it's unpredictable. That's why you don't care if you're happy, baby. You ain't got to be happy. You ain't got to be happy, but you want joy. Teacher already told us, joy of the Lord is the what? Our strength. Okay? So again, happiness is the result of happenings or circumstance. Be steady. Enjoy. Because happiness is unpredictable. And if you're steadfast in the Lord, unmovable, always what? Abounding, yep, in the work, service of the Lord. That's the work, the service of the Lord. And you're able to do that because, again, the joy of the Lord is your strength. You can defeat discouragement if you have joy. Versus cover it up. A lot of times we put band-aids on cancer. We put a mask and makeup <laughs> over our faces. But baby, it's time for us to walk in victory. God is not giving you a spirit of fear or where the devil is to dominate you. You can be victorious in him. Victorious in him. Amen. Last but not least, joy is lasting. Versus happiness, which is temporary. Happiness, ladies, is temporary. You're not going to always be happy. But joy is lasting, everlasting, with Jesus. Ladies, to sum it all up, remember that what you want to do is be in right relationship with God so that you praise him in the manner that pleases him and pray or communicate in such a manner that praise is continuously flowing from your heart because prayer must include praise. Therefore, your joy is expressed in praise, no matter how you feel. And when you are truly respond in worship, in God, in his spirit, and in, in truth, it is your whole heart that you do it with, and that then makes him worthy. Pray my strength in the Lord.